Today on the bench, I just thought we'd look at balancing the cells in your pack when you're doing a repair and how to balance them. Uh, there's, there's so many different ways to do it. I thought we'd go over uh, the way that I'd done the pack in a previous repair video. Pretty much the same principle applies to all packs and can be done so many different ways. This is not in any way limited, but just including the ways that you can do it. One of the reasons for this video was YouTuber and subscriber, K Sax Music, had a lot of good comments about the uh, 56 volt lithium pack and had some questions. One of them including, could we do a video on how to, how to balance the battery? So we'll try to do a quick one on how I done it. I didn't go into a lot of detail in the video because the video had gotten so long, but there's several ways to do it. I have here, a fully charged and repaired pack that I got the drop that we went over in a previous video, the drop power supply, and we can set this to whatever voltage needed, really even down to one cell if you wanted to bring a cell up from say three volts to 3.3 volts or there's a lot of different ways to do it. I like to get mine somewhere in the middle. Um, if I can do it like 3.6 volts, uh, 3.7, 3.8 volts, anywhere in there. It all depends on where my pack is. For example, this happens to be the last pack that I have to repair. It also has a B14 that is a bad cell. I also have my board in here that I've taken all of the potting off of, so I can easily check, go through and check every cell. Now if I go through and check the cells on this one, I go to ground to B1, 3.68. If I go B1 to B2, 3. Point, almost 6.7. B2 to B3, 3.67. Well, I already know going through this, so I'll save you the boring time in this, but all these cells, all but B14, it's right at 3.67, 3.68. So if I go here and go B13 to B14, well, I don't get anything. That, that cell is done, is shorted. It is zero volts. What I have here is a, is a cell from another pack that is in good shape. And if I check this cell, 3.624 so I'm really close here on this one all I really have to do is just charge this one up a little more I wanted I do want to get it as close as I can it would be nice if I did this a lot I would probably set up a little Arduino or some other microcontroller and yeah it's, it's fairly easy to set you something up where you could set a certain volt a certain voltage uh, you could just set that certain voltage and let the microcontroller cut out cut out a MOSFET or something of that nature, really how you design it. And you could just cut the battery pack out at wherever you set it at. Or no more than you do it, just program in the data table which one you would select. But I always do the simple method. For example, it, I had one cell that I mentioned in a previous video that I actually overcharged. I had stuck it in a charger. Here we go. I had just stuck it in a charger similar to this one right here. This little charger will do um, all kinds, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, NICAD, but, but anyway, I had put it in a charger and kind of left it a little longer than I had meant to. And so that last battery pack repair that, I, that I'd done and actually mentioned in the video, I had overcharged that cell more so than I had already done the pack. And what I did simply on that one was just, I rigged up, I had two 10 ohm, 10 watt resistors that I've had in parallel for years, just sitting around. So that's basically a little over five ohm resistor when you measure it. So you gotta figure it was right at four volts. I think it was 4.1, but we'll say four volts, five ohms, we got about 0.8 amps. So, well within the range of these two 10 watt, that's about 3.2, 3.25 or so watts. 
to pull this down. And of course, if you did a little math on that, being a, a 2.5 amp hour pack in series, I don't have any information on these cells, but that means these cells are also gonna be rated for 2,500 milliamps each. So that will be about three hours, actually a little over to pull that pack all the way down. Of course, we're not pulling it all the way down. I think at that time I wanted to get it down to like 3.8 or so. So I actually just hooked up. You can do it different ways. These little battery holders are cheap. They will fit in there if you work them a little bit for just a regular 18650 cell. The wire is not, not great, but yeah, for 0.8 amps, it's fine. Or just clips, however you want to do it. I also have a one ohm resistor. If you figure the four volts at one ohm, that's right at four amps. That'll, that'll pull it down really, really quick. But it's 16 watts. I believe this to be a 12 watt resistor. I actually don't have it printed on there, but it's the old resistor I have, the wire wound. I did put a fan on it and I did pull one down because it, it, it didn't take quite so long to pull it down a, a few tenths of a volt. Cause these little cells are, they have quite the capacity. It takes a little while to pull them down. So when I can, I'd rather charge up to what I have. For instance, on this one, I just need to charge it just a little. And I could even bring in another little small Yiko power supply. It's small, I just have a little switch mode power supply hooked up to it right now. Anything below 24 volts, I can set this for voltage and current. It does the same thing. So something below 24 volts, that right there will be totally fine to do individual cells up to several in a pack. It all depends on how many in a pack you have bad and what at what point you want to charge up to. For example, if I needed to charge this pack up because maybe it had been depleted by this battery, because I caught this one fairly quick, the voltage of this pack is as I found it. So it's right in that range that I like. It's actually 47, it's about 47.1 volts with the 13 cells, not including the bad one. So that's right at, that's right at 3.6, six or seven um, across all 13 cells combined. So one thing I'll do, if, if I charge across all 13 to a certain point, I will monitor and make sure that the batteries that are known are thought to be good. I will make sure they stay balanced during that check. But that is a way to, you can actually do that with this plugged or unplugged, but I like to do it and monitor it while I'm, while I'm charging mine if I can. But just to be, just to be said, you can actually unplug all of this and still go straight to the batteries. And you can still monitor your batteries individually, but you'll have to do it, take the uh, this little sticky tape off and actually get to each terminal. It's, it's not that difficult, but it's a lot easier to do it here if you already got this connected and it's readily available. And if you have to, you can even do these in sets. Like if you want to do four, four at a time here and four at a time here, just whatever batteries you do, just do it times that voltage you would like. If you want to be 3.8 volts when you get done, you can charge four. You can do your four in series. Just with a four or five, whatever times your 3.8, set your power supply for that. I would always set the current to one amp or lower just to give it a, you know, one C or so charge rate on your cells. I wouldn't go above that. Just charge it up, bring it up slow, and get your pack up, get them well balanced before you actually solder in your new cell. Because as I mentioned in a previous video, you don't even want to be close to 0.1 volts off. You want to get it down into the 0.01 or 2 if you can. 
because the closer you keep your cells and then put it on the factory charger to charge it up, it's going to charge them all and look at individual voltage on that. So it really, really matters. If you got 1.3 volts higher or lower, it makes, a, it makes a dramatic difference in the use of your pack, the capacity of it. Because it's going to look at your high cell when it's charging, when it's, in, when it's individually monitoring the cells. Once that high cell gets to, I think it's 4.15 on most of these packs. So if you got one cell that's higher, if 4.15 is going to stop the charge, and the others may be at 3.8, 3.9. And the same thing when it goes to discharge, those at 3.8 and 3.9, the lower capacity charge ones, when it discharges down to the lower limit, the BMS is going to cut the device off, whether it's your weed eater or blower, or whatever tool you're using at the time. It's going to cut it off a lot sooner than it should be. So keep that in mind. Keep your batteries well balanced. It is a very, very important part of the repair. Hope this video helps a lot. Thanks for your comments. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And thanks for watching.